So now we're going to move on to the reading from something you forgot along the way. Well, today's story is number 10, page 29. The best tasting dish. Once there was a king who was determined to eat the world's tastiest dish. He gathered chefs from all over but he had grown so accustomed to fine dining that his palate was jaded and nothing appealed to him. None of them can cook worth a damn, he growled. Find me a better chef. His aides were at a loss until someone came forward and announced himself to be the greatest cook in the world. Can you cook food that will satisfy me? Asked the king. Yes, your highness, although I must ask that first you do exactly as I say. Sounds interesting. All right, I'll do it. So go ahead and make the food. For the next three days, the new chef never left the king's side, but simply sat and did nothing. When are you going to cook for me? Asked the king. Soon, your highness, I promise. On the third day, when the king was weak with hunger, the chef brought in a simple dish of vegetables. Here is the world's tastiest dish, just as promised. Bon appetit. The king fell to ravenously. After wolfing down the dish, he marveled. I've never eaten anything so delicious in all my life. What is it and how did you make it? The sauce that makes all food delicious is hunger, replied the chef. When you are close to starving, any food tastes like ambrosia. The pleasure of eating comes from the lessening of hunger. Without the discomfort of hunger, the pleasure of fine dining could not exist. The same is true in life. Those who avoid suffering cannot experience pleasure either. True happiness is not for the timid. Okay, very good. So this is a, um, yeah, very funny and uh, profound story at the same time that teaches us about the nature of um, relative happiness. So, um, relative happiness is in relation to other people or our past self. So if we are not hungry and then we eat food, it's not going to taste good um, because there is no need to eat. Yeah. Um, so without that process of going through uh, hunger, there is no joy of eating. Similarly, in life too, uh, without suffering, there is no pleasure either. So that means people who constantly avoid suffering, they cannot experience pleasure. So what that means is uh, if they're avoiding suffering is they don't want to look at the reality that everything is impermanent or they don't want to look at the reality that of human nature. So maybe they want to believe that, you know, human nature is all very good and everything. And then they're constantly disappointed. What's wrong with these people? Why, why they behave this way? So they always create their own suffering and they suffer in life. And then ultimately speaking, if we're not being truthful about um, the nature of reality, our own mind, also, then we cannot experience true happiness. So it's just cause and effect. So if we want true happiness, it has to be in accordance with, uh, with truthfulness, being honest, yeah, brutally honest with ourselves, and then 
look at the reality as it is. So even if it hurts in the short run, even if it's painful, even if it's difficult, if it's true, we need to respect that and uh, be honest with ourselves. And then little by little, um, we will be able to enjoy true happiness. So that's the process. Without uh, facing the suffering, we cannot uh, overcome it. So good job, everyone, for being here, doing this recitation meditation, paying attention to the workings of our mind, quieting the mind here. And today is Sunday, so in the morning we will have a session for the advanced members. And yeah, have a beautiful Sunday. Take care. Bye-bye.